The history of British government is littered with tussles between the first Lord of the Treasury and the second, the Prime Minister and Chancellor. But perhaps none quite like this, none which have soured quite so quickly. In Rishi Sunak, the Treasury must absorb their third Chancellor in a year and a new way to interact with number 10. They will be shocked and the suggestions that this is the beginning of a massive reshaping of the way the whole government works will be quite traumatising for them. This is an unprecedented attempt for Number 10 to you know, really, really sort of take control of the Treasury rather than just set up an alternative power centre to the Treasury, which is what we've seen under other Prime Ministers. Number 10 now wields more control over economic policy and the Treasury than it has in recent history. Javid was probably the last real opponent of No Deal at the end of this year. That's gone. Javid, his ministry and his tight fiscal plans were considered a roadblock to Number 10's plans on public spending. It would be very surprising if he cleaved quite as close to that very tight line that Saj was fighting for. This is hardly the first battle between Numbers 10 and 11. Thatcher and Lawson clashed again over her economic advisor, Alan Walters. Blair considered breaking up the Treasury but never dared under Brown. Harold Wilson set up the Department for Economic Affairs, the DEA, to try and impair the Treasury's dominance. The Treasury fought back, as it always does, and saw off the Department for Economic Affairs. And their modern-day Mandarin successes must surely smell an opportunity with Javid's departure. They know that the Prime Minister might be able to lose one Chancellor, but he can ill afford to lose a second in quick succession. If he chooses to, Rishi Sunak could yet wield a great deal of power. In this, he will be aided by a Whitehall system still embryonically woven with Treasury might. Treasury power resides in its bilateral relationship with everyone else in Whitehall. Every other spending department, every other directorate has its Treasury official watching it. That Treasury official has his modus or her modus operandi. And those can't be uprooted so easily. That's like trying to change the basic algorithm of governments. Sunax has been a meteoric rise. Elected an MP only in 2015 after a career in the city. He was a junior housing minister only eight months ago. He was an early backer of the Prime Minister among the newer MPs, a fact not forgotten by Number 10, and has become a favoured ally. Indeed, he was selected to be surrogate for the Prime Minister himself in recent election debates. You said he couldn't get a Brexit deal, it would be impossible, but he did. He is also well regarded in Whitehall, a man of the utmost ambition. He must now calibrate his response to the patronage given to him with his own future. Will people look at him as anything more than the sort of, you know, Prime Minister's stooge sock puppet? He's going to have to do quite a lot to establish himself as a player of authority. I think, you know, also going for Rishi Sunak, though, is he does seem to be, you know, very well regarded, uh, very positive reports about Rishi Sunak from Treasury officials. So they might be quite relieved that if they lost Sajid Javid, then that is who they got rather than another minister. Boris Johnson started the day at what was supposed to be the height of his power. In theory, he and Dominic Cummings end it more powerful still. But this was no planned operation. They expected Javid to fold. Much will now depend on the character and strategy of the man, the new second Lord of the Treasury, second man of the government, of whom we, and perhaps even they, really know little.